Hey, Brian, how's everything going? Good, Al. It's great to see you. Oh, it's really great. And now, Lewis, I understand you're here as well from uh, the uh, Japanese organization? Yes, Eltec Corporation. Eltec, and of course, everybody knows Arnold Alderman, great man here. And what do I have to thank for you gentlemen appearing and giving me this briefing? Well, Alex, I'm here to talk about a brand new uh, PSMA technical report that's just been issued. Excellent. And um, I'm uh, co-chairman of the packaging committee for right. PSMA. And we've been working on a two-year initiative uh, to explore 3D packaging for power. Very nice. Well, I've always felt that packaging is the last frontier, especially when you start talking about things like wideband gaps, semiconductors and such. Absolutely. What we did last year is we did a broad survey of 3D packaging where we didn't exclude anything. We Very looked good. at all areas. We didn't do deep dive on any specific area, but we covered a lot. This report was issued at last year's APEC in, uh, and it, it covers a broad spectrum of 3D technology. Mm -hmm. What we found in doing that, that the prevalent emerging technology and possibly disruptive technology uh, for the 3D packing is embedded substrate technologies. Mm. The use of um, the, the purpose being to embed components within the PC board to shrink the footprint of a power supply. Makes a lot of sense. And so we did a uh, very detailed study. Uh, we commissioned a very detailed study on embedded substrate technology. And that's what we're here to talk about today is, is, the, is the phase two report. Uh, where we do do a deep dive. We go into all of the components, the technologies, uh, thermal, you name it, uh, very extensive report. We commissioned Altec uh, to write the report and do the research. And, um, and I see they, Arnold's name on the cover as well. Yes, and they brought together a consortium of themselves, including their Japanese mm -hmm. organization, mm -hmm. Fraunhofer Institute, and Arnold from, from Managenesis. So while we were the project manager, if you will, these gentlemen are the ones responsible for the content. Excellent. And they did, a, did an excellent job. We have a 340-page report with a, a, lot of, a lot of very detailed material. Well, it looks nice and thick, and I know you guys don't waste a lot of paper. Wow, yeah, this looks really nice. It's our, our first full-color report that PSMA has ever done. Uh, it's got an extensive amount of detail in it. Uh, lots of graphics, lots of references. Uh, the soft copy has live links in it uh, so that you can um, immediately go to websites. It names names, it talks about vendors, uh, what components they have, what processes they use, what manufacturers are building things. So it's, a, it's an ideal primer for anybody looking to get into embedded power packaging or if you're already into it, to possibly find more sources than you've got than you've used today. Sweet. So uh, I see you have a presentation here. Let's uh, let's walk through it. Okay. Uh, this basically goes th goes through what I covered today, which is is the report is a research report. Um, it was done researching government, uh, academic, and in industrial both presentations and um, uh, papers. Uh, we did interviews with industry. Um, insiders, if you will, experts. Um, we did, Arnold, about, what was it, 28? About 30. 30, about 30 interviews with industry experts, and they were extensive interviews. They lasted usually an hour to 90 minutes. So wow. they were in-depth, great deal of technical information exchange. We also surveyed the industry, and we got surveys back from about the same number of people. Very and nice. And again, very in-depth technical surveys. What came out of those interviews and surveys uh, is in the when report. In the, so it's very, not just feedback on papers that were already published, it's in-depth interview with, it, with industry, industry experts and surveys of them. So it's an accurate snapshot of the current state of the art? We, we believe so. That very was nice. our objective. And as you can see here, the, real, the purpose of it was to determine the availability of embedded component technologies to make power supplies. Very nice. So that was our, that was our drive. So We've got a couple of definitions in here, which I've kind of covered in the conversation already. Uh, what is 3D power packaging? Basically, it's the use of the Z dimension in the fact that it's the, it's the need to the fact that every generation of digital product, uh, router, base station, you name it, they either want to keep the same size or they want to shrink the size, but they want more power. Right. And so 
you've got to got to get more density. Basically, output more power in the same footprint. Mm -hmm. And uh, packaging is getting to be a problem. The industry has used components on both sides of a single PC board for years. Right. And um, you, we're reaching limits. Even though we've done fantastic things as an industry to get more and more in that same footprint, um, we're starting to hit some hurdles, which we'll talk about in a minute here. So, uh, but 3D with embedded is basically placing components within the PC board. And this is just one technology that's shown there mm -hmm. as to how that can be done, okay? So I just answered that question, what is embedded? We use three terms in the report, embedded power modules, which is basically a complete power supply where some of the components are embedded in the PC board. We use the term component embedding. That's just to refer to the fact that components are inside. Mm -hmm. It may not be a complete power supply. It may be just a module with just the semiconductors in it. Right. Or, or the passive, or maybe the, or uh, the resistors and caps in it. Or anything like that. Right. And then the term substrate just simply refers to what most people think of as substrate as a planar structure uh, with multiple conductive layers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so why? Why do we need to do... Uh, and what's the drive? Why is the power industry interested in this? And why are so many people looking at it? It's, it's come about due to the paradigm shift in semiconductors, particularly digital semiconductors. Mm -hmm. the, the digital semiconductor technology has reached the point is they can still pack more transistors into the same number of square millimeters, right. if you will, or within a square millimeter. Mm -hmm. They still can increase that. But what they have not been able to do is increase the efficiency of the transistor by doing that. Because they get so small, they start to leak. They start to leak, they get hot because current is flowing. So what has happened is they have stopped so much shrinking because they, mm -hmm. they, they can't get rid of the heat when they do that. What that does is add cost because now even though they get higher density, they have more thermal problems. So they right. have to get rid of the heat and so they've hit a cost barrier because it gets more expensive now to increase that integration. Right. So they haven't reached an integration barrier, but they have, they have hit a cost barrier. So what they, what they have done, what the digital world has done, is they've gone to different packaging techniques. Wafer thinning uh, is one of the things they do so they can stack wafers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they can put wafers on top. They're going 3D. Right. right? The other thing they've done is they've gone to 2.5D and 3D integration where there's transistors integrated on top of transistors. Right. And so they can keep the device size up, keep the efficiency of the transistor up, but you've now got multiple ICs either in the same IDs or stacked upon each other, and you can do things then in the very same footprint, the digital guys are now drawing two to five times as much power in the mm -hmm. same footprint that they, that they did before. Right. Now they've increased the computing power or transfer power or if it's, a, if it's a switch or something like that, you know, the same amount. But we in the power supply community now have to power that. Right. It doesn't take any more space and they're not giving us any more space to put that power supply next to it and yet we get to deliver two to five times as much power. Right. Okay. So that's one thing that's occurring. The next thing is power density. This comes to the, our, our latest transistor technology mm -hmm. in that we aren't able with conventional PCB technology to take advantage of the gallium nitrite, the silicon carbides, and the gallium arsenics because of packaging. Right. The, the parasitics caused by bond wires and package leads leads to tremendous problems basically through ringing. They switch very, very fast. And to control that ringing, we've had to throttle back the devices right. in order to gain the efficiency of their lowest RDS on. So two factors, those are the two driving factors that say embedding is the way to go. By the way, embedding gets rid of those parasitics. You put the die directly inside the PC board, you solder it to the heavy copper traces in the PC board, uh, and it gets rid of that capacitance, extra resistance, and mainly the, the inductance. Mm -hmm. So well, And some heat. And you get the heat out, too. <laughs> it's thermal management along with it, right? So, so those are the two driving factors is why the industry is looking at it. When we surveyed um, members and conducted the interviews, not members only, but when we surveyed the industry, the two leading reasons they said they're 
investigating or actually implementing embedding is is performance and size. Because they sense. get both. They get more performance, higher efficiency, and they can reduce the size then if they can do that. Makes so, a lot of sense. So these are the areas the report covers. We have in-depth chapters on resistors, capacitors, and magnetics, so we cover the three important passives. We have a significant chapter on um, the substrates, organic and inorganic, mm -hmm. uh, FR4 type materials and uh, ceramics. Uh, interposers, high temperature die attach is, is part of it. Sintering is one of the technologies covered in the report. Uh, and then we talk about other packaging technologies. Thermal management, of course, is a huge key because when you start putting more density in, you then have to um, get rid of the heat. Right. You know, even though hopefully you're using these new technologies to generate less. So, and then we've got additive manufacturing because we found some of the most clever thermal management techniques use 3D printing in order to create very sophisticated either metal or plastic devices to aid in thermal management. Smart. And uh, so that's, that's going. These are some of the benefits when we talk to talk to vendors, we talk to um, manufacturers, and we talk to customers uh, buying the devices. You know, the top ones are performance, reliability, and size. Uh, ease of use always comes in. Um, but you can also do things with this because you can now shield a lot of the circuit by laying a, a circuit layer above and below where you put your components, right. which you can't, which you couldn't do when the components are on top of the board. You got to add a metal can to shield it. So, exactly. Um, um, with the additive manufacturing, you can reduce product-specific tooling, uh, which gets you to you know time to market faster. Cost. Everybody always got to know about cost, right? Uh, what we found at this time is if you compare the cost of embedding to doing a two-sided printed circuit board assembly is there is a slight premium to do embedding. Now, a lot of that's due to scale. And it's early days. It's early days, right? In the fact that a lot of the processes at the moment have not scale, scaled up to the full-size large PCB panels that the industry uses for PCB manufacturing. Exactly. That is starting to come uh, a couple of the suppliers of the PC boards and substrates are there, but not all of them. And we, it's just early days. As volume ramps, as more and more people do this, um, that, cost will, that cost will go down. However, people are willing to buy it now, we found, to get the premium in reduced size and improved performance, because it's, it's, it's not always that, it's not that much premium, if you will. And if you measure the cost, in dollars per watt per cubic millimeter, it's significantly less than two-sided PC boards. Very nice. So the other thing is standards. People say, is this real? Is this a real technology? Uh, and what, you're, what you will see there is the IPC has already been active creating standards for this manufacturing technology. So um, they're trying to stay ahead of the curve. They've got standards for devices. They've got standards for PC board design. They've got standards for design and process. They've got standards for qualification. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are um, in their first edition. Some are in second edition. And some are, are just being written as we speak. Got it. But they're rushing to have a full set of standards uh, out to cover the needs of the industry um, with this technology. The Japanese have also been creating standards. And so what we found in, in our discovery work and the research these two gentlemen did is, is that the centers of excellence, if you will, for this technology mm -hmm. are, are in Asia and Europe. Got it. And the U.S. is, is lagging. So that means we got to catch up. <laughs> got to catch up. Absolutely. So I'm just going to show you a couple examples. Um, of this, of the technology. ATNS is one of the leaders in this, particularly for power. Mm -hmm. um, they had one of the first processes that were brought online. They were aided by a, a European Union uh, a consortium that the European Union funded and put together to drive this technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they were one of the leaders in that, um, in that consortium. But they are in mass production with this. They're in Very large good. panel size. <coughs> um, the TI devices that are use embedded components are made at ATNS. Uh, Gan Systems, who uses embedded technology, um, uses ATNS. I have a, I got a photo on the, on the next slide. But okay. what it is, as you can see, it, it's it's a standard PCB assembly process, except for the fact that as before the layers are laminated, cavities are being cut. 
in the PC board to allow you to, 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 to embed the devices. And yeah. To embed the devices. Now, different companies have slight variations of that on how they do it, how they mm -hmm. get the embedding done. Uh, this is ATNS's main process, which is called ECB, which is just embedded component process. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, GAN Systems uh, uses this. GAN is going to present a paper on this, as is ATNS, by the way, on, on, on Wednesday's industry session on embedded um, power. Um, TDK um, has done their own process. They call it the SESUB process, which they won't tell us what the SESUB stands for. Um, but uh, it's slightly different, and you'll notice that there's um, um, copper within the layer uh, of the embedding, which the ATNS process doesn't have. It only has it on, the, uh, on one side of the embedded layer as opposed to both above and below. Mm -hmm. Not an important difference, just a difference. Got it. If you, if you will, in the, in the way they decided to, uh, to assemble the module. Uh, Infineon's Dr. Blade. Many people don't realize the Dr. Blade 2 package is an embedded package. Mm -hmm. And why do they do that? Low parasitics. Exactly. Exactly. Same, same reason that GAN Systems does it, right? One of the key things to doing embedding is components. What are your, what are your components? You know, how do I get these components? They're not, you can't use standard service mount components to embed. The main reason you can't do that is you need copper terminations. Got it. You can't use a solder termination on it. And that's due to the copper to copper interface that you're looking for um, between, the, uh, be between the layers and the PC board. There's two ways to make the components is you can use form components. Resistors are the ones that are easiest because that's been around a long time. Thin film and thick film processes on FR4 have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, capacitors are now being done. You can now buy the dielectrics to simply lay in between two copper layers on a PC board. Uh, and you created a capacitor. Very right? nice. Right. So, um, and inductors, planar inductors. Have well, they've been building them right. They've been building them. That's been going on for a long time. The, the new thing is the fact that so many of the standard component companies are now making components just for embedding. Right. What they're doing is they're thinning them because you don't want to get the PC board stack too tall, and they're, they're changing the terminations to make them compatible with the process. One of the things IPC is working on is trying to get some standard package definitions uh, because there isn't written standards yet. Now, several of the companies have adopted some you know, look-alike mm -hmm. standards, if you will, uh, but there's a large number of the components available. The report goes into great detail of who they're available from, what values they have now, and it says always ask when you're getting in because they're releasing more and more components every day that are available for embedding. And many of them will take and change an existing surface mount component to make it embedded compatible mm -hmm. just by changing the termination. Right. So uh, there's a great deal available. So in summary, you know, what, what the report talks about is, is all the technologies that are coming together to make this possible. There's a great deal of detail on all of them in all the chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, the standards are either here or coming. Mm -hmm. uh, within a year or two, they should be, at least the first edition of all of them should, should be complete. Um, so the components are there. Uh, the infrastructure is there. There are subcontract manufacturers. at &S is one of them, but there are others um, that you can go to, and they'll help you build your first power module. Very first nice. First power device. So you don't have to bring the expertise in-house on how to design the board and the processes and all that. To get you started. Very good. So, uh, so, how, so does, how do people get the, the report? Where can they go? Is there a URL? Uh? Yes. The the I mean the easiest place to start is just go to psma.com, right? And uh, that'll lead you to the information on how to purchase purchase our reports. We have many of them. You can get both the uh, both the phase one report if you want the big overview. You can get the the detailed phase two report uh, to get into the real deep dive on embedded components. And we have many other reports there. And we've talked about probably less than 5% of what's in this report. And so uh, it's well worth taking a look at it. I agree with you, Brian. Brian, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time, especially during a busy show like APEC. All right, Alex. Well, thank you for taking the time. Here and thank you, Lewis. And thank you, Arnold. I appreciate you guys. And also the work you put into the report itself. He's a great
these guys <laughs> these guys did a fantastic job. They put a lot of hours in and covered a great deal of information. I agree. Thanks, gents. Thank you.